Famcast Media. Bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, persons of all ages, welcome to the most exclusive group in the wrestling community. And now, our host, first, from Oaxaca, Puerto Rico. Como estamos, mi gente? Welcome to another edition of Wrestle Talk. This would be Wrestle Talk 13. As I sit here and I wanted to talk to you, kind of about what happened on Monday Night Raw yesterday. I mean, guys, let's go over it. Monday Night Raw was exceptional. The show itself started off with a bang. We immediately had the Judgment Day come down to the ring. And right away, they jump into their new story. And it's Finn Balor and it's Damian Priest. And they're talking and they're excited about being tag team champions. Only to be interrupted by Cody Rhodes. Who points out that they cheated to win. That's right, guys. They cheated to win and you know what it honestly felt to me like a generic promo by Cody Rhodes I don't know if it's me alone but I almost feel like Cody Rhodes has become kind of stale I'm not really enjoying what's happening with him I'm not really enjoying his style anymore I want more edginess I feel like the best version of Cody is when he's edgy, when he's exciting. This version of Cody is boring. It's not exciting at all, guys. When I watch professional wrestling, I want to see at least the baby face be able to keep up with the heels. And we're not watching that at all. We're watching the Judgment Day own everyone. And I don't know if this is the objective, if they're taking a playbook out of the Bullet Club or if they're taking a playbook out of NWO. But when I see the programming that's happening right now, I'm starting to realize that, hey, some of this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't seem like it's working with anybody else. They just seem too cool. And that was a major issue. With the NWO and WCW, guys, I don't know if you know this, but back in the day when Eric Bischoff and Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan, when they had the NWO in its heyday, one of the things that really stuck out with them was the fact that they were just cooler than everybody else. I mean, let's think about you and I right now. We're wrestling fans. We've been fans our entire lives. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast if you're not, if you weren't. And yet, here we are, thinking about the fact that in the 90s, we weren't cheering for the good guys. I mean, yeah, in my case, I was cheering for the good guy if his name was Sting. But anybody else? No, man, I wanted the NWO to win. I loved rooting for Scott Hall. I mean, honestly, because he looked a little bit like my dad. But I always thought he was super cool. I always thought he was never used properly in WWE, that he should have been a world heavyweight champion, and he never was. That's what we're watching right now. I think Damian Priest is cool as shit. I think Finn Balor is kind of obnoxious, but he's kind of cool. I look at Rhea Ripley. She's the coolest person on the entire roster, and this is a roster that includes Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. When I watch this right now, guys, I'm seeing a shift where we're headed to this area where the bad guys, right, the heels, are looking to take over the company as the faces of the company. And I think that's odd because I think right now we have wrestling fans that seem like they're more so excited about people losing titles. That seems to be a really big deal. Oh, let's just hot potato the title back and forth. We don't need this guy to be champion for this long. We don't need this girl to be champion for this long. 
We want something else, something new. Everybody's clamoring for Seth frickin' Rollins to lose the title. Now, moving back onto the segment, it ends with the Judgment Day pounding down Cody Rhodes and getting him out of there, guys. And then in, in kind of a weird way, we get a concerto on steel steps by Demian Priest to Cody Rhodes. And honestly, I thought it was a really great spot because in originally I thought, what if the plan is to get Cody out so that way fans could miss him? What if this is the plan to keep Cody fresh? That we're just going to continue to have Cody be eliminated, taken out of things. What if that's what we're gaining? What if that's what we're moving towards? I really enjoyed the segment. I thought it played off really, really well. And I'm excited to see what else happens in pro wrestling. After that, we move on. And we have, I would say, a backstage segment. Now, this is a problem I have with pro wrestling lately. The backstage segments have been so overbearing. The amount of times that we've had backstage segments in pro wrestling lately has just been too much. Like, I get that the company is very excited about how we're moving forward, but I really, really want less backstage segments and I want more stuff on screen, like in front of a live audience, because I think I've changed my tune, guys. I really appreciate what the live audience provides for a storyline. I think a live audience provides more than just a little bit. It provides so much. So now we have the New Day versus Alpha Academy. Akira Tozawa has become the newest member of Alpha Academy. I mean, what do we think of this, guys? I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. But the New Day beat Alpha Academy clean. It's weird. Just a classic baby face win. I don't know. Either WWE has just forgotten about Chad, Chad Gable. Or they've just given up on the plans altogether. From here we have a backstage segment with Rhea Ripley. Where she's trying to recruit Seth freaking Rollins to the Judgment Day. But obviously she's not interested. Natty is trying to insert herself in like the Indy Hartwell stuff. And she's trying to be supportive of Indy Hartwell in her upcoming match with the man Becky Lynch. And I thought this was pretty cool. We go directly to the match and we see that Lyra Valkyrie is in the stands, guys. Now this match between Becky and Indy, I feel like Becky has done a really, really good job of putting over young talent. She let Indy get a lot of work in this match. We go from there to obviously Becky wins. She retains because she's wrestling Lyra tonight. We, they have a face-off. Now we see Zia Lee attack Candice LeRae. So now we're having a Zia Lee resurgence. And I'm excited. Let's get it because I think she's a really talented professional wrestler. Once again, guys, we go backstage to Adam Pierce. Where he's being nice to Nick Aldis, you know. Nicer than Nick Aldis was to him. After their little pleasantries, Adam Pierce doubled the security for, for the fatal five-way contract signing. And he makes it clear that Rhea Ripley's only allowed to come out after the contracts have been signed by all other competitors. But of course, the contract signing doesn't go well. And Rhea Ripley comes out. And tons of mommy chants. I mean, she is so over right now. It, it would take something drastic for the fans to start booing her. I don't even think they want to boo her when she's with Dom. 
Naya and Raquel, they, they have a little tiff. They go at it. And, you know, Rhea Ripley's just sitting there laughing that all of these people are tearing each other apart. American Airlines Arena is just chanting, let them fight, as Rhea's just looking on, laughing her ass off. It's It was a really good segment, guys. From there, we go to Johnny Wrestling, Mr. Johnny Gargano versus Giovanni Vinci. And, yeah, this match was good. We're not going to... You know, we're not looking at a bad match whenever Johnny Gargano's in it. Giovanni Vinci's a lot better than people give him credit for. It it seems to me like the objective is to break up Imperium. To have Gunther find a way to blame both Vinci and Kaiser. Or Vinci. I don't know what's the proper uh, terminology for the Italian name. Now, guys, we start to get to the meat of Monday Night Raw. We have Logan Paul going in there, into the center of the ring, and he's talking about his match with Dylan Dennis. Because that's what it was. It was just like a little match. It was a wrestling match. It wasn't a real boxing fight. And he's catching a lot of heat. He's letting the fans know. He's telling them, go home to your keyboards and bitch and moan. Go do your stuff. I'm going to be United States champion, and I'm going to pop up wherever I want and defend this title. And Dom comes out, and they start really chanting for each other. But not before the fans let Dom know how unhappy they are that he's out there. I mean, let's talk about a nepotism baby and how people just genuinely hate them. I think Dom is exceptional, he's talented, and within the next three to five years, I expect him to win the Royal Rumble, the men's money in the bank. And be a world heavyweight champion. Or a WWE champion. Logan Paul pokes fun at Samantha Irvin. Telling her that she has to announce him as the new United States champion. And then tells her. Or asks her. To please do a preemptive announcement. And he seems like he's starting to flirt with her a little bit. He's brought out Ricochet. He brawls with both of them. Gets the upper hand on both. But not before... Logan Paul pulls Dom out the ring before he takes a shooting star. It's a really, really good segment, guys. Logan Paul is definitely talented, super unlikable, and it translates to professional wrestling. He is everything that you want in a professional wrestler. From here, we move on to a WWE Women's Tag Team match with Piper Nevin and Chelsea Green. Versus Natalia and her partner for today is Nikki Cross. But Nikki just stands there. I mean, Natty gets her ass kicked. And she just pretty much sells everything. It was a weird segment, guys. Very weird. From there, we move on to... What I considered the true main event of the evening, but obviously it wasn't on last, so it's not the main event, which is Drew McIntyre versus Sami Zayn. What a match, guys. What a match. Wade Barrett's pointing out that Drew McIntyre hasn't been his, to use his word, jovial self. Drew McIntyre is a lot of things, guys. I wouldn't say jovial is one of them. It looks like Sami Zayn is going to win this match. He hits an exploder suplex to the corner. He goes to the other corner and he's getting ready to set up the Huluva kick for Rhea Ripley to come out. And him to be distracted to walk right into a Claymore and a pin. Drew no-sells everything. Walks to the back, ignores Rhea Ripley entirely. It was a really interesting segment. I'm hoping Drew McIntyre gets added to the Judgment Day. I feel like that level of powerhouse in this group, the level of talking that this man can do, it would be exceptional. From there, we have a squash match between Bronson Reed and Akira Tozawa. I mean, I think this was just a palate cleanser before we got to the the actual main event of the evening, which was Damian Priest versus Jey Uso. This match ends exactly the way you thought. A lot of shenanigans. Finn Balor distracts Jey Uso. 
He walks right into a choke slam from Damian Priest. Damian Priest gets the pin. They beat him down. Here comes Cody Rhodes with a boot on his leg. And he takes out the Judgment Day on one leg. I mean, sure. I thought this Monday Night Raw was pretty good. Not great. Not the best that they've had in a while, but it was okay. I enjoyed what we saw. Definitely wanted more. Looking forward to them continuing to build Crown Jewel this Friday night on SmackDown. Also looking forward to night one of Halloween Havoc tonight. Super excited for Becky Lynch versus Lyra Valkyrie. I think they're main eventing tonight, so that'll be good to watch. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much been my Raw review. Appreciate you all listening. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to everyone that's listening on Spotify or Spreaker. I appreciate every single one of you. I, I cannot thank you guys enough for subscribing to our YouTube page. We're up over 300 followers or subscribers on YouTube. I think I speak for myself and Tyler when I say this has been better than I could have ever imagined and I truly appreciate you and I love that you enjoy our insights and professional wrestling. And I'm trying to get Tyler on the show more, but he's more of a once a week guy and I'm trying to provide lots of content for you because content is king. All right, guys. Que tenga buen día.